13, 17, 13, 18, there's a reported shooting on North Ave. We're gonna actually watch them murder a person right here in this alleyway, here in just a few minutes. Yeah, I have a vehicle uh, that circles the block before arriving at the scene of the shooting. I've got someone getting out of the car, running over to the woods, and then coming back. It's probably where they dropped a gun or something. Ross McNutt and his team work for the American Police Force. At their headquarters in Baltimore in the east of the USA, they analyze the photos from the flying surveillance system. The father of four developed this air surveillance system during his military deployment in Afghanistan and Iraq. His fleet of Chessners, equipped with high-tech surveillance cameras, take pictures of half the city every second, every day, around the clock. McNutt wants to make America's no-go areas safer using this surveillance system. In his development center, Ross McNutt is currently working on a new camera set for his aircraft. And each camera will be at a slightly different angle that allows us to take that huge image all at once. The system hangs on the side of the plane. And this is how it works. The planes circle for five hours at an altitude of 3,000 meters. Every second, they take a high-resolution picture of 90 square kilometers at once. They register every movement on the ground. Google Earth Live, so to speak. Theoretically, McNutt can spy on every single person. Our resolution is just one single pixel for an individual person. So we can't tell anything about who the person is. We can only follow that dot from the crime scene to the car they tend to get into and follow the car to the house they tend to go to. Only one pixel for each person. The cameras can't show any details regarding face, clothes, man or woman. The privacy of the individual is therefore not at risk. McNutt's surveillance system costs $2.5 million a year. Chessners, cameras, analysts. He now sells his system worldwide. Ross was 11 when he first got on a plane with his father. Even now, he still sometimes flies over the most dangerous cities in the USA as an airborne crime scout. The, the poor communities don't get as much policing support as, to be honest with you, the wealthy communities. And the fact that we're focusing on the area where there's the highest crime and the largest need makes us feel you know, like we're helping. Um, it feels good. Also on board is a system operator. He makes sure that the cameras are running and that the data reaches the analysts on the ground, which happens within five seconds. The police in turn inform the air reconnaissance units of emergency calls. Analyst Mike knows exactly what to look out for. Now, there's different patterns that we look for. Um, unusual activity would be cars making U-turns in the middle of the street for no apparent reason, cars stopping in the middle of the street for no apparent reason for long periods of time, uh, foot traffic in the area. If there's a lot of people gathering and moving towards one location, then there's something going on there, obviously. Mike has been watching a car and is now tracking it. So this is the second time circling around a block, and right there. He stops, he pulls over for 12 seconds during the same time that the shooting occurs. Okay, that's a good, good chance that maybe he's our sus suspect. Then Mike simply rewinds and tracks the car to its supposed starting point before the crime. Using Google Earth, he can forward the exact address to the police. In the first two months that McNutt's surveillance planes were in the air, 17 violent crimes were observed and solved. People of just one pixel in size on pictures taken from 3,000 meters above sea level. Ross demonstrates exactly how this helps him solve cases by showing us where his last one started. An armed robbery with a shooting at this store. This is Amanda. She lives next door. She was attacked and robbed six times in two months. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of people getting robbed. There's uh, the girls out here in the neighborhood are getting raped, and there's just stuff that's not being reported. Yes, I would give up my privacy 
to make sure that they're the unsolved things, the crimes that are going on in the neighborhood. It starts here with a shooting. The police are alerted and ask McNutt for help. He finds out that the perpetrator has raided a library just before. By the time the police arrive, the perpetrator has also robbed a discount store. Ross and his team turn back time and follow the perpetrator to where he starts his crime spree. Using the aerial photos, they can determine which car was at all three crime scenes. What we were able to do is follow that same car backwards to a gas station up here where we have him actually putting gas in his car. So with all that information, with the description of the car, the description of the person in the area that he started and finished, we were able to solve this crime quite quickly. The gas station's surveillance cameras even filmed the man's face. The police now have the license plate of the car and the suspect's picture. During only one mission, McNutt's pilots receive about a hundred emergency calls. In the most dangerous cities in the USA, a murder happens almost every day, including tonight. We're watching the news in our hotel room. There's been a shooting at the edge of town. McNutt wants to take a closer look at the crime scene on the ground. You can see the car, they've already taken down the crime tape. This is probably where it happened. Yeah, you can see the door there. About 15 shots were fired. While we're recording, one of the neighbors suddenly appears and tells us what happened last night. Well, I heard fire coming and then return fire. And I came, I came around the corner and the body was laying over on the ground. They said they was playing cards or something in there. And from what I heard, the uh, guys pulled up, tried to go in and rob them or something. Although this neighborhood doesn't feel safe, he still finds McNutt's camera planes above his head disturbing. It's still invading privacy. Some of it might not be the crime they think it is. You know, things is different. Essentially, there was one person killed, one person struggling for their life, two other people shot. Jesus Christ! My daughter, gotcha. she's a single parent, and she has two boys, and she stays right here. I don't have anything to hide, you know. Whatever I do is, is wide open, so you can watch me, pull me over, or whatever, and I'm, I'm clean as a whistle. Now, if you got something to hide, then you probably would feel invaded, you know, if you're doing something wrong. And so whoever did this could be caught if they were being watched from the air. McNutt would like to deploy his aerial surveillance in many more cities, but often fails due to opposition from the public. Internationally, however, his system is arousing interest. European countries in particular want McNutt's surveillance from the air. A number of the countries that are on the eastern side, uh, eastern, southeastern side, are, are very interested in detecting and seeing where people are coming across the borders. Uh, I can't say specifically which countries, uh, but there's a number of them that are interested. And we're working with a couple of European partners that hopefully bring the capability to Europe. Well, I think we're gonna, I want to have... McNutt has experience with this. He's been monitoring the American-Mexican border for nine months. For this, he uses this infrared camera. This way, he can catch drug smugglers and, of course, report illegal immigrants. <laughs> There's something going on there. Yeah. He gets out of the car, runs around, jumps back in. I wonder what that means. So you can tell a difference between a refugee or a, uh, an immigrant group and a drug group. Uh, the drug groups actually walk in a tighter formation, they walk faster. The immigrant groups are usually larger and more spread out. So it's, you know, you, after a while you get to recognize what the different patterns of the groups are. For four months, Ross flew over the US-Mexican border. He sees 34 murders and can spot a secret tunnel system. This is what McNutt's border surveillance could look like in Europe too. Perhaps his camera planes 
will soon be circling above our heads. <laughs>